And this week, we're going to react to the 2023 Grammy Award nominations. And I'm gonna, I got a thought, first off. You always got and thoughts. I, and I think I speak for everyone here. We know they're a fucking scam. We totally. know the Grammys, it's a sham. So we know that going in. So this is just, let's just have some fun. Let's pick some, pick some categories, give some thoughts, and let's go. So, Nate Tone, what comes to mind here? I'm excited to talk about this, but only because I want to say the name of the episode. You think I give a damn about a Grammy? I mean, we've been kind of off and on love-hate relationship with the Grammy since we heard Eminem spout that off in, what, 99, 2000, whatever it was. So I'm torn with it because it's cool when you see bands that you like and you've talked about and uh, you live with make it onto a list like this because they've, you know, they've gotten into the mainstream looking at Turnstile. Uh, and it's also like everything that's wrong about the music industry, right? At the same time. Yeah, pretty good assessment right there. I think what we've always known growing up, and I'm happy you kind of brought that to the surface right out of the gate, Twan, is like, we know it's fucking bullshit. And I think we've known forever. Even like as casual fans, as kids growing up, you're like, wait a second. This band's na nominated for six Grammys in six different categories, and they're already plastered everywhere. Is this just being stuffed down my throat all the time, you know? So older now, we kind of get a, a little bit more insight from people that come on the podcast and just obviously we do a lot of digging. So yeah, the take now at, in our like mid to late thirties is like, all right, it is a scam. It is a sham, but what is really going on here? And why are some of these artists on these lists year after year, decade after decade? Yeah, I think you nailed it. It's, it's basically modern day payola radio is how I've always kind of looked mm -hmm. at it, you know, mm -hmm. and how true that is. I have no idea. I don't know. I should probably know more about it, but it just, when you see themes over the years, you question why in a negative way. But I questioned even with Turnstile, you know, like, how did that happen? Are they deserving? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. We, we raved about glow on, but like, how did it happen? You know what I mean? Like if you told me two years ago that the band that wrote step to rhythm and keep it moving would be nominated for a Grammy two right. years later, I'd be like, one, I wouldn't believe you, but two, I'd be like, how you know it's yeah. the taco bell commercial that, that's it's how it's, it's, taco bell <laughs> it's it's here and here and uh turnstile coming out of that uh car in the taco bell commercial all of a sudden somebody in the recording arts raaa was like hey let's give them a grammy nom i i, I like taco bell three of them right yeah rock performance metal performance and rock song which is you know are they a metal band no but Blackout is a rad song, so I'm here for it. Yeah, exactly what you said. We like Turnstile. Go back and listen to our uh, best of last year. I think, did we all have them at one? We all had them at one. Pretty cool. One. one or two. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we raved about that, like Twan said, last year uh, around this time, you know, late uh, 2021. Huge fans of that record. Huge fans of what they've done uh, to be part of this conversation. But man, <sighs> that's why I'm torn, because it's... It's like a piece of us and stuff that we like made it into a, a mainstream situation. But at the same time, like, why? How? Yeah. Like, how did you get that right? But you get so much else wrong. Do we want to like want to dig into one of the categories yeah. that they're in? Yeah. All right. Metal performance. They get Ghost, Megadeth, Muse, Muse and Ozzy in, in Turnstile. So like Megadeth and Ozzy, no one even smiled at those albums like no, no one even right. knew that they existed so at what point is it just like you said nate legacy acts just getting the nod i mean does did anyone even know megadeth put out a new album no yeah uh, yes but barely <laughs> so it's like it's a head scratcher you know how does it happen and muse i did listen to that song killer be killed is it metal maybe are they a metal band traditionally no so where do you draw the line uh, is it mall metal, Twan? Is it <laughs> mall metal? I didn't make that up. Some people thought I made that up, but I didn't make it up. Yeah. Uh, no, I, Muse is traditionally not a metal band. I'd say they live more in the like the middle of their career. They sound more like Queen <laughs> in spots. Mm -hmm. uh, and then early in their career, they were kind of a noisy rock band that, I mean, Origin of Symmetry is fucking awesome. So go back and listen to some of their old stuff. But I don't get this category. I, I don't get the five people in it or groups in it. It's you, people know who Megadeth is. People know who Ozzy is. 
So that's why they're there. But other than that, I'm not sure why they're actually nominated. And I mean, it reminds me, this category specifically reminds me of the uh, Metallica behind the music. I can't remember which year they were nominated. Metallica has been nominated a, a ton. But the band or the artist that won over Metallica in one of those years was Jethro Tull. Which is not even close to metal. Right, yeah. So like, right. what, like, what's going on here? Who, who's right. making these decisions? Is it just like someone sliding it in? Like, no one's going to notice this shit, and then they win. Yeah. Is it who? It's it's obviously connections. It's I'm sure there's some payola. I don't know. Like, I don't know how you could land on those five. Like, someone who's really connected. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying we're like the the final word for any of these categories. But man, that's the best you could come up with. Either it was a weak year or they just don't know what they're doing. I think they, they probably will give it to Turnstile just because of the buzz that's been around that band now for a year and a half. That's a good call. And maybe it's supposed to be like benchmarked by like these legacy metal acts. Like, this is what you're up against, you know? The yeah. Budweiser and Miller Lights of metal, and they're here <laughs> every year. But oh, right. you're a craft beer. You're coming in. You're hot. <laughs> Everyone's digging you. You're on every bill. All right. We'll throw them in the mix too. And you know what? We'll have them play a song live at the Grammys, and then, surprise, they'll actually win like 20 minutes later and just make it a big spectacle. Surprise. I love that. In air quotes, Nate, right? <laughs> surprise. <laughs> you said something I thought of today, which was they, the committee, you know, the recording industry of America, whatever, the committee knew that they wanted to nominate Muse. They didn't know what they wanted to nominate him for, and then they retrofitted them in. Just said, okay, you can go here because it's, it's an edge case, but some people, you know, won't freak out about it. You know, at least it's there and not like jazz. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's how it is. And I think it's probably fabricated down to the winner. And, and like you said, they're just putting bookends to mask that and with these big names. Yep. The other thing I noticed just casually looking through the list of nominees and nominations uh, was how you get, you get somebody like... So Brandy Carlisle, who has a couple of people that helped her write a song or helped her write a record. You get somebody like Bonnie Raitt. It just says Bonnie Raitt. She wrote the song, the music, whatever. And then you go to like Beyonce, and there's probably the population of a small country helping her <laughs> put that record out. Not to say that Beyonce isn't talented. That's not what I'm saying here. But what I'm saying is there are so many people behind some of these pop records. It's no wonder they're nominated every year because they're all in the industry, right? Like everybody knows everybody. And this is how you end up there. But man, I just, that makes me feel a little dirty too. It's like, this isn't real. None of this is real. Well, to use a sports analogy, it's, it's the team with the biggest bankroll typically wins. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of what's going on here. You can, you know, a Tarantino movie, you know, they put a lot of bank in it. You know, there's a big writing team. Of course it's going to do well. And I'm Good glad point. that there's, you know, indie film festivals, but on a music side, it's kind of the Grammys. At least that gets the, the forefront in limelight. Right. And even sidebar on that, it just made me think, like, when someone like Beyonce is accepting the best, best music video award, what does that have to do with her at all? You know, like you said, there's an army of people writing the music for her. Well, same with the music video. I don't think she, unless she has proof of concept in a document, she came up with it. That's not her idea, you know? So why is she winning? Why is she, why is she the one accepting the award? It doesn't make any sense. Well, she's the face of it, that's why. But at the same time, like, it, there's just so many people involved in some of these pop records uh, that it's it's kind of crazy to me when uh, you, you see them nominated, you know, year after year. And those lists just keep getting longer and longer. Go do yourself a favor right now. Go look at the nominations. Look through the category that Beyonce is in, and I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head, but it's like album of the year. And there's a couple other people in there with maybe four or five people that helped out. And then her list has to be 75 people long. Same with Lizzo. Has to be, you know, a little bit less. You know who else's is kind of high, which surprised me? Kendrick Lamar. Wow. I didn't expect that. And uh, what is he, rap category, obviously? Album of the year. Oh, just album of the year. Yeah, from Mr. Morale and Big Steppers, uh, which is, I like it. I got to go back and listen to it again because there's always a lot to unpack with a Kendrick record. But there are a lot of people that helped him with it, which kind of puts him in that pop world a little bit. And I, I think he is. I mean, we talked about it a little bit with Spose a few weeks ago. The stage presence and all the, the stuff they do on stage to, to kind of make it a, a show versus just a, a hip-hop concert, uh, I think that fits into that pop world. And he is certainly that person in hip-hop, I think, right now. Another thing that I thought of, which was you have the same band 
nominated in multiple categories and not just like album of the year and best visuals like that complement each other, but some that overlap in like take turnstile, right? Mm -hmm. Best rock performance, best metal performance, different songs. But that's almost one that it's like they knew that they were going to make sure they had a good representation of turnstile, which like you said, caveat, we love them. Like they are that band. They still take out bands that they came up with. They, you know, they put on bands from the scene, the hardcore scene, like we love them, but it's just like someone, they have a fucking killer agent is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what that highlights is the fact that there are no real barriers on what fits and what doesn't. It's like, yeah, let's just, they're rock. Rock is so broad. There's multiple genres that this could, you know, fall into that category. And then it just makes me think, Tone, we have a running joke with, uh, with former guest and future guest Rob. Best song of the year, or sorry, record of the year, album of the year. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is, what's the differentiator, you know? Right. Yeah, performance, song, you know, album. It's like, what are we talking about? Oh, and Wet Leg. Let's not forget them. They're all over it, too. Yeah, Wet Leg had a big year. You know what I'm, I am happy about? And, and Turnstile has the three nominations that they didn't get Best New Artist because they've been around for oh, a while. Oh, yes. I thought of that. Literally, I was going to bring that up. And that's happened they before, didn't right? That shit. They did that with Fun a, a bunch of years ago. Fun had been around a while, but they finally hit. They're like, oh, Best New Artist. Like, Fun's like, we've been around 12 years. Like, what the fuck are you guys <laughs> talking about? No kidding. <laughs> That's so good. I'm glad you brought that up because they pull that shit. And then... so your your best new artist to us, <laughs> like, right? Yeah, we're now paying attention. Oh, okay, cool. But it's amazing how much pitchfork representation there was on this. Like that now, like that's that's the authority. Best... comic book guy meme. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't know, check our Twitter. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. All right. So the Grammys are. As much as we're kind of shitting on the process here, if you win a Grammy, you're eligible to vote for future nominees, right? That's kind of the system, at least is what we see on the surface as an end user. So if you're friends with said bands, you brought them on tour, obviously you're going to vote for your friends. Whether you like the music or not, I think that's kind of like not that payola angle, but it's definitely... A, a girls club, boys club, whatever you want to call it. Like, oh, I know the guy from back in the day. I'm going to vote for him. In fact, I'm going to have all my friends vote for him, just like blowing up the phone lines to win a contest. So is it fair? You know, that is earned. Someone won. But is it just like this compounding effect? Like you have a gang of people voting for you. You're in. Now you're voting for your friends. They're in. If it's just going to continue to be like this quasi-rigged system, even in that sense, are we ever getting accurate results on true music appreciation? You know, units sold, I think that's another you know, element as to why you even make the list is they're looking at metrics. But ultimately, it's, it's, I think we're kind of coming to the same conclusion. It's, it's fixed in so many different ways, and, and I think that's just another one. Well, what, what we don't know is the weighting system. You know, how much is the votes? How much is right. uh, radio play? How much is uh, sound scan? You know, we have no clue, and that's, what, that's why we're talking about this, which is like, what's going on here? What are, what are even the ingredients? That's a, a question that we could probably spend the next half an hour talking about. I'm just going to mic drop it and tell you, welcome to America in 2022, my friend. That's just the way things go. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Two words, folks. Mainstream sellout. Machine Gun Kelly, best rock album. Stew on that, potheads. I'm out. <laughs> Peace, potheads. <laughs> Peace. Thank you for listening to Patio Slave. We are at Patio Slave on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the places that you can find us on social media. Facebook, Patio Slave Podcast. YouTube, Patio Slave Podcast there. Email us at Podcast at gmail.com. And hey, if you want to become a supporter, click on the link at the bottom of the episode and give us a dollar, give us five bucks. It keeps the lights on, keeps us going. We really appreciate that stuff. Thank you. <laughs>